Greetings, guard. Huh? Oh, yes. Good day. How is the king, sire? No worse and no better, I'm afraid. But I'm going off to seek help. Is that true? Well, I wish you luck. And if you track down that fiend who has committed such a dastardly crime, be sure that he gets his just desserts. Calm down, my canine friend. What's most important is the safety of the king and his sister. Uh, right. Right, sire. You're absolutely right. Just do whatever's possible to help my king, and we will all be more than grateful. Tell me, card dog, why is it that you are the only one on duty at the front gates? It seems a bit odd, given the day's events. The other guards are securing the island and the smaller entrances of the castle, sire, and have entrusted me to this post. We figure that if that stranger could appear in the gardens like that, he's not likely to use something as obvious as the front door or the garden doors if he comes by a second time. The quieter entrances are being guarded with more numbers right now, but no enemy of the crown shall pass as long as I stand here. It's good to know my children are in good hands. Alexander told Graham on his first fateful and dangerous visit to the Isles, he almost used this hut to disguise himself as a serving woman to infiltrate the castle. Luckily, his path ended up taking him to the Isle of the Mists and beyond, and he was able to bring Cassima's parents back to her, among other things. The words of the Oracle guided him, Alexander said. almost killed by this tree on his way to the beach. It seems unlikely there's anything there for him to find, since the cloaked stranger clearly needed no sea vessel to come and go as he pleased. Perhaps it's just as well that the obstruction prevents for wasting his time there. It looks like Cassima's nightingale, Sing Sing, is raising a family of her own. Several noisy little nestlings are begging for food from their patient mother. She doesn't look happy in this downpour, though. Graham takes a look at the tormented tree as its branches are mercilessly caught in a tug of war in the winds, to the point of looking like they might even be torn off. The king can somehow relate. Inside of him a wild storm has just begun to rage, harrowing his every nerve, at every inch of a man who has looked evil in the eye before and won, yet has never found a way to truly put it to an end for good. Sworn, a note was attached to that door. What's going on? The pawn shop, just as the rest of the shops around here, is closed. A veil of darkness has befallen this aisle, and Graham hopes that the villagers are strong to face up to the adversity and continue about their normal business when the first rays of light reach the island tomorrow, and a new day has begun. Ali's bookstore is closed. The windows are shut and the lights are out. It really is just as if Graham walked into a ghost town in the middle of nowhere. On any other occasion, Graham would laugh at the presence of such a character. Now, however, something about him crawls underneath the king's skin. Horrifying thoughts cross his mind and the words he blows into the wind speak to Graham like some kind of bad omen that will not go unheard. Graham prefers not to talk to this man. He makes him feel very uneasy, and he must stay focused.
Graham's intuition as an experienced adventurer tells him there's nothing useful in there. Somewhere, somehow, some hand of fate decided that this chest didn't need to be opened or contain any items, almost as though by some grand cosmic game design. Graham peeks into one of the vases and finds nothing. <laughs>